Hello and welcome along, it's your pal Al here again with one of these retro things. Today it's a little bit of an addendum, it's a techie thing and it's all about how to upgrade or flash the BIOS on your XT IDE compact flash card. If you have one of these cards already, you'll know that they're fantastic. They allow you to either insert an IDE style hard drive or in some cases a compact flash card into your old machine. If you have one of those, uh, you've probably got an old dead hard drive, it's replaced it for you. The thing about these cards is that every now and again there's a new BIOS version that comes out and fixes some bugs or makes performance better on the card. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade those BIOSes. Watch out because here be dragons. This is not as simple as I had hoped it was and that's why I'm making this video. Stay tuned. So this is my card. I've had it now for at least a couple of years. I got it off a manufacturer called Suddenly Matt LLC. <clears throat> got it on uh, eBay. It was a brand new card at the time. Um, but this is a Revision 1 card. Now it's pretty difficult uh, to find out that it's actually a Revision 1 card. So if you have a card which you believe could be older, um, just check and see if it's Revision 1. I don't actually know if there is a place for me to check whether it's a Revision 1 or Revision 2 card on this. Up here in the very uh, far corner it says 1.2. It's probably in incredibly difficult to make that out but it does say version 1.2 so it's worthy of note that um, this is a revision 1 card. Most of the cards on sale today should be version 2 um, and you should get better results with a version 2 card so uh, just a word to the wise, that's the first thing you need to know which version of the XTE IDE uh, interface is it. The second thing you're going to need to know is which type of ROM is it that you're using. Here's the ROM chip and again it's quite far, it's quite difficult for you to see this one here you just have to take my word for it when I say that on the uh, chip itself it says 286C256 that particular ROM is a 32 kilobyte ROM the next thing you need to know is the interface address followed by the ROM address so you can see here the two switches switch 2 and switch 1 these are used to configure the ROM address, the interface address and a couple of other things so if I just flip round to the reverse of the card, you can see that the Switch 2 and Switch 1 settings are listed there. So Switch 2 settings are used for the XTE IDE interface address. So it's the memory address for the actual um, card itself. The default on it is 300, which is this one here, which is jumper, uh, Switch 2, sorry, location 1, 1, so on, on, off, 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 off. And uh, I have changed it on this one to avoid any conflicts. I've changed it to 280, which is here, which says on, off, on, off, off, off. And if we have a look around here, it should correlate to that on the jumper. So it's on, off, on, off, off, off. Okay, so that's, that's me. So you've got to make sure that you absolutely have these values correct because you're going to need them later on when you're configuring the card. The second thing we're going to find out is what address in memory this ROM card is situated at and that's configured through the first four switches of uh, switch 1. So again looking here, switch 1 settings says here boot ROM address and the default on it is D uh, sorry, it's D000, and I have again changed it to C800, and that's also to avoid a conflict with um, another card that I have. So obviously if you have quite a lot of cards in your XT or PC or whatever it is you've got, you obviously have the higher chance of having a conflict. So make sure you memory map your machine first of all and find out where there could be any conflicts. So uh, let's have a look at that switch one setting. So as I say, I've set it to C800, so that should be 0100 on switches 1, 2, and 3, and 4. 0100, so off, on, off, off. Okay, so that's perfect. And the next two switches here, 5 and 6, if you switch switch 1, 5 on, then that will enable the boot ROM, which is what you want. 
and then switch 6 finally is to enable the ROM flash. So obviously the whole purpose of this video is to flash this ROM with an upgraded ROM and the only way to do that is to enable the ROM flash with this switch set to on. So that's what that's on at the moment. So now I'm ready to, I know all the settings of the card, I'm ready to go. Okay, so first what I'm doing is I'm running a piece of software called Check It, and the whole purpose of this is just to make sure that the memory space that I have, uh, that I'm going to use for the XTID, is not in use by anything else. So the XTID card is in the machine at this point in time, so it should show me uh, the location of it in memory, which I believe is C800. Now you can look at the, on Check It, you can look at the memory map. There are other tools out there that will do this, but um, this is a, a nice enough way to, to show you where everything's at. So it's just examining the memory now, and you can see this is where the 640 kilobyte RAM is. Um, that's, so that's what we use normally for all our programs. Over on the right hand side is reserved, so things like the video RAM, and then other things like the BIOS. And then if we have a look at C800 to CC00, that's where the disk ROM starts. And you can see the XTE uh, 2.03 uh, BIOS is at the memory location. Um, which is there, C800 to C0, CC00. So now that I know that, what I can do is I can pull out the, C, uh, the XTIDE card and make sure that nothing else is conflicting with that area of RAM. Once I'm absolutely sure that there are no conflicts, I'm ready to start work on upgrading the firmware. I should also say, don't forget to back up the contents of your compact flash card. You never know when you could lose it. I chose to uh, copy it using the command line with cp-a, uh, just to make sure that all the files, even the hidden ones, are copied. Okay, so a word to the wise, this is really important. Before you begin, make sure you have a formatted system disk that's with MS-DOS on it, that can boot and has the XTE IDE CFG program and all the particular BIOSes, the BIOS images that you want to burn onto them. You're going to need this floppy disk if anything goes wrong. So make sure you have it. And I've used the floppy disk throughout this whole process rather than relying on the data on the C drive or the compact flash. Uh, so first things first, all I did is I uh, got a five and a quarter disk that I found lying around and hoped that it would be okay. I ran a scan disk first before I formatted. After that, all I did is I did a format A colon forward slash S, which copies the MS-DOS 6.224 file system to it. And then it's all ready to be booted. All right, so to download the BIOS, all you need to do is go to xtideuniversalbios.org forward slash binaries. The latest version here was release 602. So, without further ado, let's get the keyboard and see where we go. Okay, so, um, on to the A drive, there is the tool. Uh, I'll just show you a quick DIR. On there you can see the various files. Uh, the ones that we are interested in are obviously the bin files which are all the ROMs themselves, and then there's the xteidecfg.com. Now, depending on what sort of machine you have, you want to choose a different type of uh, ROM here, the bin files. The difference as well is with the L and the P. The L star stands for large, so they have more features on them, but they only fit the larger uh, 12K or 32K ROMs, not the smaller 8K ROMs, which um, I think are still in quite a lot of the uh, of the cards. So let's I'll go through all of these in in a in a second. But first of all, let's uh, let's have a look at the program itself. Itself. So this is the interface here. So what you want to do is you can load the BIOS from the PROM itself, and so that'll take the um, the current BIOS and then the old settings, I can do that. So now all of the settings that I have in here uh, will match what's on the ROM. So if I have a look in here, primary IDE controller, you can see all of the settings are as what they are for me. Okay, so um, 
once you've done that, what you want to do is load the appropriate BIOS file. Okay, so this is what this is the BIOS image that you're going to flash with. So let's do this. Um, load from file. Then you'll just see the listing off all of the files on there. So obviously, as I say, if you've got an AT, so that's a 286 processor, then you want to use either the AT or the ATL one. The AT is the smaller, that's the 8K ROM, and the ATL is L for large or long or something like that, which is a 12K ROM. So obviously if you've got the larger BIOS chip, you can use the AL one, which gives you slightly more, fe slightly more features. The XT and the XTL, same sort of idea. The XT one works on XT class machines, so that's with the 8088 processor, um, and the large version of that as well. Again, if you've got the right ROM, support it. And then there's XP, XTP and PL. The P will work with, and only work with, V20 processors, 8081 processors, and um, also 80286 processors. Um, so those obviously just the standard version and the long version of that as well. So um, I'm going to use this one because I have a 286 class processor in here and also have a fallback V20 processor. But obviously if you just got a standard XT, you want one of these. So I'll choose this one. And then what you want to do is configure the IDE Universal BIOS. And so you go into here. First of all, you have a look at the IDE controller itself. The first thing you want to make sure is correct is this part here. Which revision is your card? So if it's a newer one, it's probably going to be this one here, XTE IDE revision 2. My one's a revision 1, so I'll select that one there. The base uh, command, the base command block, which is basically where the I.O. sits, if you remember earlier on I said that I had my one set to um, 280 so I'll just pop that in but basically it's whatever um, the the particular uh, setting is on the card so you shouldn't go wrong as long as you know what setting it is on the card and the control block address is a, an offset usually of 8H so for example this one here 280 it should be 280 and 8, so that would be 288 in this particular case. Um, so yeah, that, sh that should be right. Um, you can change settings for the master and slave configuration. Most of those settings, unless you have some sort of weird IDE hard drive rather than a compact flash, they should be able to be left alone. But uh, obviously you should um, have a play around with these if they don't work. Um, when you first try this. Okay, so those should be the same as well for the slave, so we shouldn't need to worry about that. Back to the configuration, then you can have a look. Uh, if you have a secondary um, IDE controller, you can choose the appropriate one from there. And then there's boot settings, you can choose the default uh, display mode or whatever. If you've got multiple floppy drives, you can switch off auto, you can choose that. The boot drive should be correct at 80 H, um, and the selection timeout, you can change that if you think it's not long enough. Um, there is an auto configure mode, sometimes that's worked for me, sometimes it's not, so um, don't rely on it, but just know that it's there. Um, there is this full operating mode as well, I just switched that on to yes, it gives you a few extra options and really that's that's all there is to it there are other uh, there are other options for the revision 2 controls such as a uh, different boot menu different look different colors that sort of stuff but generally speaking that's it it's it's straightforward as that the final part is to flash so just go to flash eprom and before you start flashing Note you have to choose the EEPROM type. Now if you remember having a look earlier on at the card itself, I noted that the BIOS chip had a particular type and that was the 28256 or on the chip it said 28C, uh, 286C256 which is a 32K chip. It says so right there. So I just hit that one. Um, and, you, and then obviously you need to make sure that the EEPROM address is the correct address. 
So by default on this card it's set to D000 and I changed it on the card to C800. So it's, it's automatically picked that one up so I don't need to change it but if I did that's where you would change it. That's really all there is to it. It sounds really straightforward. However, it isn't necessarily, you can make any, mis any number of mistakes in there and the main thing to note is if it really does stuff up then you can hose the BIOS chip and you won't be able to boot and there are ways around that fortunately and I'll show you that in a moment but let's just start flashing and fingers crossed I've done all that right um, that's what you want to see um, if you get something else it probably means that you've set the wrong uh, hex reference or you've got the wrong um, BIOS type or you've got the wrong um, ROM type so that, that I, the first issue I had was that I chose the standard 8K ROM rather than the 32K ROM and it just re flat out refused to flash anything at that point. Let's hope that um, it uh, is happy with all of that and decides to boot up from the compact flash. So there we go, an absolute success. The BIOS um, was uh, flashed and everything looks good. So that's the process you want to follow. Obviously it will differ between revisions and locations of ROMs and, and those sorts of things, but that's the general process that you have to go through. Now I'm going to help you if you manage to brick it, which is what I did the first time I did this. So to unbrick it, there is a uh, jumper on there, if you remember, on switch 1, which was number 5. So if you switch that to on, it disables the boot ROM. And then disabling the boot ROM, you can then start up the machine with the card in place and start up the PC from the floppy disk. And then whilst it's still in the, the machine, whilst your machine is still switched on, you can toggle that switch on the dip switch back to enable boot ROM. So you can see there switch 5 set to on and that will allow you to then boot up the, uh, the well, allow you to flash the ROM. Once you flash the ROM, reboot the machine and hopefully your uh, card is then unbricked. Anyway, that's everything. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please uh, pop a comment in below or press the like button. And also, please subscribe to our, uh, my videos. I've got a, got a whole bunch more coming up sometime soon. But until then, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.